Greetings everybody, Adam Savage here, surrounded by Mythbusters props for an excellent reason. Uh, the props behind me have spent the last decade touring as part of a traveling Mythbusters, the explosive exhibition exhibit. And I hope you got a chance to see it. I'm very proud of that exhibit and the ways in which it broke new ground for traveling museum exhibits. But if you didn't get a chance to see it, you won't because it's not happening anymore. Um, but that's the bad news. The good news is, is all these props are now going to be auctioned off by Prop Store uh, to benefit the Grant Nimahara Steam Foundation. So it's your chance to get a piece of Mythbusters history into your collection. And the piece I wanna highlight in this video <clears throat> might not look like much, but it is a super vital and important piece of Mythbusters history. And it's all about the rockets. What we have here are two triple ro rocket stacks that it's not going too far to say that they represent the entirety of Mythbusters run between these two objects. Um, okay. <clears throat> Mythbusters owes, I think, its early success to the popularity socially of the idea of a Darwin Award. Um, back in the early aughts, in the early days of the internet's popularity, uh, there was a lot of attention paid to the Darwin Awards. These are awards given to people who supposedly helped Darwin out by thinning the herd by removing themselves from the gene pool uh, because they were dumb or stupid. Um, no judgment, really. But the most famous early Darwin Award was about a, a, a guy who supposedly found what's called a JADO, jet-assisted takeoff rocket. These are used to help giant transport planes get enough forward momentum to leave a short runway. And he took this jet-assisted takeoff rocket, bolted it to the top of his Chevy Impala, and supposedly took off at 350 miles an hour across the desert, hit a ramp, flew a mile through the air, and embedded into a cliff where he became some tiny chunk of metal to be discovered and unpacked by some sheriff years later. Totally not true. Completely didn't happen. But a very testable set of assertions. Uh, and in fact, the rocket car episode was the final episode we shot in the summer of 2002 for the Mythbuster pilots. It was the first time I'd ever been to the desert, let alone filming in the desert. It was so early in Mythbusters history, we didn't know that when you go to the desert, you should bring a lot of easy up tents so you have some shade. That's how ridiculously naive we were about filming back then. Um, and to be clear, we could not get the military. Well, wait, wait, wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. We made the rocket car episode three separate times in Mythbusters history. It is without a doubt the most expensive set of experiments all told when you join them together that we ever conducted. Uh, and it was both awesome and a spectacular failure in some regards. Um, but it all begins with these guys. This is the rocket stack I built in 2002. Uh, and it's made to house three, if I remember correctly, they're end motors. I can't quite remember the size. Um, just remember when you were practicing with your little SDs rockets and those were like Bs and Cs and Ds, the letters keep going. I think these were Ms or Ns and these are Rs if I'm not incorrect. So the reason we used uh, uh, commercial motors was because the military wouldn't give us a jet assisted takeoff rocket. In fact, um, in a classic uh, 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 depiction of military efficiency, they said no to us three times. We called them, they said no. We called them again, they said no. And then six months after they said no, that second time they called us back to say, hey, we're just letting you know no again. They're just very, very thorough. So we couldn't get a JADO, we had to invent our own, and what we needed to do was we needed to replicate both the amount of power the JADO had and its firing time. So the JADO fires for like 15 seconds or something like that. So what we decided to do was to take these commercial rockets, stack them on top of each other, and stagger their release so we get both the power we wanted and the length of time of the burn. Um, I welded this together in Jamie's shop, I specifically remember it had been a long time since I had done uh, a lot of welding. And it, it is really delightful when you've got some heavy steel tube and you've got this nice angle to go in there and lay the speed. I just remember an entire day of how much 
how satisfying it was to lay down the beads on all of these. And then to design this frame, to bolt to the top of the Chevy Impala. And when I did it, I was embarking on a practice that I would do countless more times in the course of Mythbusters, which was trying to picture all of the forces that would be on this thing and how to counteract them. Right? So this is bolting to the roof of a Chevy Impala. If it's going to go at 350 miles per hour, that's a certain amount of torque. I needed to build this frame to be able to accommodate that amount of torque without tearing itself off the car and flying into the, into the ether or into us. This was my attempt to do that. Um, I will tell you that when we got to the Mojave Desert, we had a, a guy out there who was known as the mayor of Mojave back then, and he took one look at this. He'd been part of several rocket cars out on the flats, and he was like, that's not going to work. That's going to tear right off the roof of the car. And my producers were like, Adam, is that true? Is that going to tear off the roof of the car? And I looked at it, and I looked at all of the thought process I had about spreading the load. And it wasn't just this frame. There was a whole internal frame in the car that this bolted to. So I was spreading the load. I built this so that you could have lifted the car up by this rocket stack and turn it vertically and it wouldn't have affected its movement on the car. That's the strength I built it to have. And so when my producers came to me and said, dude, this guy who's supposedly an expert is telling us this won't work, what do you say? And I said, I think it's going to work just fine. I disagree with him. It was a difficult moment to disagree with the expert. Um, and yet, reader, I was right. I almost kept this piece for myself. I have a great love and affection for this. This typifies the kind of unbelievable scope we were able to do in those first three pilots. Um, it is a spectacular execution of a story. We were in a helicopter chasing this thing across the desert. It didn't get to 350 miles an hour. It got to about 130, 140, which is still pretty significant. Um, we got pulled over on the way to Los, on the way south to the Mojave Desert. We got pulled over by the side of the road by a cop who just said, what is that? What the hell is that? I'm required to pull you over just to ask what that is. Um, and then we said, we're making this new TV show. And he was like, okay, sure, whatever, and let us go. So this was the first rocket car episode. There was a second rocket car episode we did in the middle of Mythbusters run. And in this, we were able to afford much bigger rockets. Um, I think we only needed two at that time. That's what the R motors were, right? They were really long and really powerful. There's just this thing, which is uh, rocket fuel, solid rocket fuel, which is what these were built with. Um, is made in batches. And when you have rockets made out of solid rocket fuel, you want to make sure that the batch you got is a good batch. And so there are two prices in some of these rockets. One price is they make a batch and they just sell you those rockets. And that's the inexpensive version. Another one is they make a batch, they fire off every other rocket in the batch. Thus, the ones that remain, you are far more assured that they come from a working uh, chemistry. The problem is those rockets cost twice as much. So in that middle Mythbusters rocket car episode, this is the first one, this is the last one, the middle one, the rockets don't exist because we bought the inexpensive rockets and they blew up on the stand. They, they yeah, they detonated before they ever got to launch our Chevy Impala. And this is one where, uh, technically, that's a disaster, right? Discovery has paid 150,000 extra dollars for this episode because we've told them a Chevy Impala is gonna fly across the desert. And the, not only does it not fly across the desert, but it eliminates any possibility of flying across the desert. This Impala, which we dragged with cables with a mechanical switch that would fire the rockets at the exact moment it was the bottom of the ramp to get the speed up so that when left the ramp would actually be flying. All of our systems that Jamie and I arranged and engineered worked perfectly. The only thing that didn't was the one thing that wasn't our purview, which was the actual rocket motors. Cut to a couple of years later, we convinced Discovery to pony up the dough for a third rocket car episode. This is in the final season. And this time we paid for the good rockets that we came from a batch we knew. You can see it here on here. It says rocket motor and then it says uh, lot number, right? Doesn't it say lot? Yeah, lot 97. Yeah, this is 
this is what we're talking about. This is really specific. Like you pay for the ones where you know that batch has been fired. Um, we busted it again. We busted this myth three times. But these six, these two rocket stacks of six motors really sort of exemplify to me the whole history of the engineering, uh, the scientific exploration, the aesthetic exploration, and the crazy stunt heavy excursions we went on. Ah, yeah, like I said, I almost kept this because I love it, but. I decided it should be auctioned off as part of this auction. I hope you want to put it in your house. I do not want you to bolt either of these things to any car you might have, and I will not help you. I just want to state that out at the front. But yes, two lots of rocket motors at your disposal. You can own a genuine piece of Mythbusters history. Um, I will sign both of these, and uh, yeah, don't try this at home. Thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Oh, I forgot one last thing. Sorry, come on back. Uh, the URL is propstore.com slash mythbusters. All proceeds from the sale go to benefit the Grant and Mahara Steam Foundation. There you go. Now I'll see you later.